Praise the Lord. Let the church say, Hallelujah. And everybody say, Amen. Let's rise up as we pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord, for the great things you are doing. And you have blessed our lives. We are asking, O oh Lord, as you have blessed us, you make us channels of blessings for all the people in Jesus' name. Other people have reached us. And we are to reach out to all the people. We are asking, Lord, the love that motivated you to come to the cross of Calvary to die for us. And the love that motivated all the people to tell us. That same love will motivate us and will tell all the people in Jesus' name. As we have instructed, commanded us to go and search for the people you died for. The love to do that. The passion to do that. The grace to do that. And the strength of mind to do that. Give to everyone in Jesus' name. Make soul winners of your people. Make evangelists of your people. That this word of the gospel, the word of grace, will give it to everybody around us in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray every fear of man you'll take away. Timidity you'll take away. And the courage and the wisdom and the love to go and reach people you give to everyone. Lord, confirm the power of your word in every heart today. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the whole church said, Amen. God bless you. You can see now. We're coming to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 18. Here are the words of Jesus Christ. You know the story already. He died on the cross for you and for me and for the rest of the world. And then on the third day, after that burial, he rose again. And now he appeared to his own disciples before he went away. And what he told them is telling you and telling me and telling everyone. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, because of that power, because of that authority, because of the victory won over the devil, over sin, over everything that negated the blessing of God for humanity. He said, Therefore, Go ye and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always until the end of the world. I thought somebody will say, Amen. That means, as he says, I'm with you always. Because of that great commission, because of the preaching of the gospel, I am with you always as you're doing it, as you're going out, as you're touching other lives, as you're reaching the people, as you're searching the people Christ died for. He says, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. He expects that that great commission will continue. And that passion for soul winning and that desire to see other people in the kingdom, it will continue till the end of the world. The question is, as we go to all the nations and preaching the word to the nations, who are we to touch? Who are we to reach? Who are we to speak to? Who are we searching for to bring them into the kingdom? Mark chapter 16. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Preach the gospel to every creature. It is said the world shall come to us. 
It says we. The people that have the truth. The people that have the gospel. The people that have that love of God in them. And the love of God has turned around their lives and changed their lives. It says the love that reached you. Let it reach other people. And you go into all the world and preach that same good news, God glad tidings unto every creature. It makes you understand then what we're talking about. Reaching every home for Christ. Because Christ has commanded that reach everyone. Luke chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 10. In Luke chapter 19, reading from verse 10, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. The question is, how many were lost? Everyone. Everyone in every house. Every house in every community. Every community in every local government. Every local government in the state, every state in the nation, everyone lost. And he says he came to seek not just a few, not the favored ones. He came to seek everyone that was lost. And you know there are people in our world. There are people in your world that are lost. Look at verse 13. What he has now committed unto us, he began it. He started it. It's not finished yet. Many people are still out there that they need to be sought out, be called out, and they need to come into the kingdom. He says in verse 13, and he called his ten servants. You understand that what ten servants is making the ten to represent the whole. Is making the ten to represent all his servants, all his disciples, all his followers. You're included. I'm included. We're all included. It says he called his ten his servants and he delivered them ten pounds. And he said unto them, tell me what he told them. Tell me out aloud. Occupy till I come. Get busy until I come. Keep doing it until I come. It tells us something. There may be things you said. That one is settled. I don't have to do that again. What does that mean? I've repented. I don't have to do that again. I'm born again. I don't have to do that again. I have this. I don't have to do that again. I'm married. I don't have to do that again. I've gone through schooling. I don't have to do that again. Yes, I understand. But there's something you have to do again and again and again. And it says, occupy. Get busy. Get working. Keep on searching for them. Keep on looking for them. Keep on seeking souls, the people that are lost, until I come. That's a great commission he has given us. And we don't retire from that. That's a great commission he has given us. And we don't relent in our efforts. And we keep on and on and on until he comes again. Look at Luke chapter 24. And here I'm reading from verse 47. Luke chapter 24, verse 47. And behold, verse 47, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached. In his name. And that name is still holding sway today. That name is still effective today. That name is still given to the church today. And it says, we should preach repentance and remission of sin in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And it's not finished yet because the souls are still there. It's not finished yet because even though you have many in the church, yet there are people that are still outside the kingdom. Not born again yet. They don't have that regeneration, salvation, the knowledge of salvation yet. They are outside and Christ died for them. And he said, search for them. 
bring them in. And as you bring them in, they come into the same grace you have come into. Look at John chapter 10. John chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 16. And all the sheep I have, which are not of this fold. is saying, don't close the door yet. Keep the door open. All the sheep I have which are not of this fault, them also you have come in, them also you are saved, them also. He says, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. Thank God they will hear the voice of Christ. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. We're going to search for them. We're going to look for them. We're going to bring them in. The great commission will prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. John chapter 17. In John chapter 17, look at verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Look at verse 18. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so, have I also sent them into the world. Do you notice something there? Verse 17, sanctification. Verse 18, soul winning. If you believe the first one, verse 17, you must believe the second one, verse 18. If you know that verse 17 is still there for today, because it must be there until it comes again. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And if you believe that verse 17 is still effective today, you must believe verse 18 is still effective today. Verse 17, sanctify them. Verse 18, as thou hast sent me to the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. He called us out of the world, cleansed us, forgave us, saved us, and established us in the kingdom. He said, I brought you out so I can send you back. So that as the Father sent me into this world to seek the people that were lost. Also, I'm sending you forth. And thank God you will go. I say, thank God you will go. Look at chapter 20. John chapter 20. I'm reading here from verse 21. John chapter 20 verse 21. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. I said, Peace be unto you. Peace in your soul. Peace in your heart. Peace in your life. And peace in your family. Peace be unto you. Listen to what follows. As my father... Have sent me, even so send I you. Look at that. As soon as he gave us the peace, and if the peace still continues till today, he wants us to understand the soul winning, reaching out, reaching out, reaching out, touching every life and calling everyone and bringing them into the salvation of the Lord must still continue because he said, As the Father has sent me. And I have been obedient to the voice of the Father. Even so, send I you into the world. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. I'm reading from verses 1. From verse 1. It says, The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. He didn't finish evangelism. He began. He didn't finish the walking of miracles. He began. He didn't finish the teaching of the word. There were still people who have not heard after he died, after he rose again, after he went to heaven, and they must hear. Jesus only began. And you now, the body of Christ. You now, the voice of Christ. You now, the hands of Christ. You now, the feet of Christ must continue. What he began. Thank God you'll be faithful. Am I talking to somebody there today? 
Thank God I said you will be faithful in Jesus name. Look at Acts chapter 5. In Acts chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 19. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. The Lord said it. Now the angels came to confirm. And he said, you're under persecution. You're imprisoned. You're arrested. The door is open. Go forth again and preach the word. And I pray that nothing will stop you. Nothing will muscle your mouth. Nothing will hinder you in Jesus' name. You will do it. I said you will do it. Say, I will do it. The Lord confirmed your desire in Jesus' name. How did he do it? How did he do it? Look at verse 42. Acts chapter 5, verse 42. And daily in the temple and in every house, see that. See how they did it. And daily in the temple and in every house. You know what? The early church did not think when the temple already. We didn't eat in the temple. When our local church already and all the people that come, they hear about us and they come. We didn't eat already. The people didn't say when they come from, from conference already. We come to retreat already. We've invited people. Yes, that's good. Together we do it. In the temple, we do it. In the local church, we do it. At the retreat, we do it. In the crusade, we do it. But see what they did? They carried it from the temple. They carried it from the assembly. They carried it from their fellowship. And it says, and in every house. Somebody help me shout in every house. That's talking, that's not shouting. Shout in every house. And in every house, they cease not to teach and to preach Jesus. As it was then, it's going to be like that today. I said it's going to be like that today. The Lord is counting on you. And the Lord is depending on you. You are part of his body. You are the saints of God. You are the people of God. And he says, he has sent you forth as the Father sent him. He sent those early disciples. And see how they did that? They did it in every house. We're going to do it in every house in Jesus' name. We're talking about reaching every home for Christ. Reaching every home. Literally every home for Christ. Three things we're talking about. Number one, God's plan of salvation for every house. God's plan. Of salvation for every house. God has a plan. And he has delivered the plan into the hand of the church. And he has said, this is my plan. All we need to do is reach about that plan. Understand that plan. And go forth taking that plan in hand. Making sure that the plan is effected. It will be done. God's plan of salvation for every house. Number two, great passion with strategy for evangelizing homes. Great passion with strategy for evangelizing homes. Number three, guided presentation of the Savior to entire households guided presentation as you go to this household that household and that household you need the spirit of God to guide you how to present that good news how to present the glad tidings how to present the gospel to the entire household guided presentation of the Savior 
to entire households. Number one, tell me your number one there. I barely hear you. You can sip, eat better than that. God bless you. God's plan of salvation for every house. Let's think about this. When the Lord revealed for the first time in clear terms to the people about his salvation, how did he reveal that? In what way did he reveal that plan of salvation? We have to go back to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. It was the day when God will come down in his mercy and the death penalty that was hanging on the head of everyone. The Lord was going to spare the children of Israel. It was a picture of salvation for every one of them. The parable of salvation for every one of them. The Passover that came to represent salvation for every one of them. Exodus chapter 12. In Exodus chapter 12, I'm looking at verse 3. Exodus chapter 12, verse 3. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. The beginning of the revelation, clear revelation of the plan of salvation. By the almighty God himself. And at that very beginning he said. Salvation comes through the lamb. The lamb is going to be the substitute. The lamb is going to be the sacrifice. And there is going to be a lamb for every house. For each house. Look at verse 4. It tells us in verse 4. And if they also be too small, too little for the lamb. Let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish. At that time, the almighty God was looking forward to when the perfect lamb will come. Jesus Christ, behold the lamb of God. That taketh away the sin of the world. Spotless. Sinless. Blameless. Perfect. And as the Lord was looking forward to the coming of his only begotten son. He said your lamb in verse 5. Shall be without blemish. A male of the first year. Ye shall take it out. From the sheep. And from the goats. And ye shall keep it up. Until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening, and they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and of the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it, and they shall eat the flesh in that night. Roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs shall they eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire. Its head or the legs, and with the potenance thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning. And that which remaineth of it until the morning, ye shall burn with fire. Verse 11, and thus shall ye eat it, with your loins gathered, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, 
against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be to you for a token, for a sign, for an, el for an emblem. And he says, Upon the houses where ye are, it was to be upon every house God's plan of salvation for every house. And when I see the blood, church, tell me. And when I see the blood, tell me out aloud. I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. When I smite the land of Egypt, have you discovered there that clear plan of salvation coming from the Almighty God Himself? And it was to be for every house, every house. Actually, if you go back to the time of Noah, you'll discover in Genesis chapter 7. Genesis chapter 7, God's plan of redemption, God's plan of salvation, God's plan of redemption for the people that he saved. It was to be for the household. And that's why today, as we look at the good news, and as we look at the great commission, we want to do it systematically. You want to do it effectively. You want to do it with strategy. And you want to reach every house for the Lord. Genesis chapter 7. We're reading from verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house. You see God's plan? God's plan, salvation was coming to him. And then God said, not just you, you and your wife, and your children, and the wives of your children. It says, come thou, and all thy house, each of the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. His plan was to save the whole house. And God's plan is still in place today. You're saved, your house will be saved. Your family will be saved. You cannot say, well, that's their business. I am saved. I'm a child of God. If they like, let them come. If they don't like, let them stay where they are. No, you cannot say that. The plan of God is that your whole house will be saved. Thank God it will happen. I said, thank God it will happen. You speak to the rest of the family. And you speak to them tenderly. And you speak to them effectively. You speak to them convincingly, knowing that God's plan is that they will be saved. And as you are faithful to that, God will make it happen. Look at Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 4. As for me, here is the Lord talking to Abraham. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham. But thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. And I will make nations of thee. And kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee. And thy seed after thee. In their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Look at what follows here. And I will make of thee, I'll, I'll give unto thee and unto thy seed after thee. The land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession. I will be their God. And God said Abraham, unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generation. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you, and I seed after thee. 
every man, child among you shall be circumcised. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token, a sign, a symbol, an emblem of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man, child in your generations. He that is born in the in the tell me the word there house and bought or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed see what the lord is saying he said i'm making a covenant with you you you've seen my favor you've got my favor and i want the same favor for everyone in your house even to the servants in your house You'll see then the plan of God for salvation for every house. Let's come to the New Testament. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 11. Acts 11, God's plan of salvation for every house. Your house included. I said your house included. Acts chapter 11 verse 13. And he showed us this Peter reporting back to the church, talking about Cornelius. He said, and he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words. That's what the angel told Cornelius. Peter will come. He'll tell you words whereby thou, tell me the rest. Thou, tell me out aloud. And all thy house shall be saved. You can see in the hand of God, in the plan of God, in the desire of God. He doesn't want anyone to perish. And house by house. Family by family. Location by location. He wants everyone there to hear the gospel. And how are they going to hear the gospel? An angel came to Cornelius. The angel could have told Cornelius the message. No, that's not their ministry. But the people who have come to know the Lord. He knew one of them, Peter. He said, sent to Joppa. Peter is there. The great commission has been given to them. And they are to reach every house. They do need in Jerusalem. They must come over here where you are. Caesarea. And they must declare that word of God to everyone. And so thou and all thine house shall be saved. Acts chapter 16. You're reading from verse 30. Acts chapter 16. What are you reading from verse 30? And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? I want you to understand the question here. It is the Philippian jailer. Paul and Silas had been in jail in the prison. But they were not regretting. Why did we preach? Why did we cast out that devil? Why did we run errands for the Almighty? Look at where it landed us. Not at all. In the night, in the midnight, they began to sing. You sing when your trials are much. And when you sing, everything will evaporate. I didn't hear a faith clinic. Amen. <laughs> I said, when you sing, all your problems will vanish away in Jesus' name. And so they began to sing. And then all the prison doors were open. As the prison doors were open, the Philippian jailer came out. He wanted to kill himself. It's like they've all gone. And Paul, the apostle, shouted. He said, we're all here. And then he took the light. And he saw them. He was concerned only for himself. What's the question? Sirs, Paul and Silas, sirs, what must I do to be saved? He didn't know the plan of God. But look at the answer. The answer 
declared the plan of God. God's plan of salvation for every house. And he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Tell me the rest. And thy house. He didn't know about that. He thought, once I'm saved, I'm all right. No, you're not all right. It's not complete yet. You don't want part of the family in heaven and the rest of them in hell. Thou shalt be saved and thy house. Look at what follows in verse 32. If they're going to be saved, we we'll have to do something. We we'll have to preach the gospel to them. And if the whole house is to be saved, we we'll have to bring the gospel, the good news, the glad tidings to the whole house. And they spake, verse 32, and they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. They spoke the word, the word of salvation. That's the plan of God to all that were in his house. Look at verse 33. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and he was baptized and all his, all his house, straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he said, meet before them. I rejoiced, I rejoiced, believing in God, tell me, with all his house. That's, that's God's plan. Rejoicing with all his house. But why? How about that? Look at First Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 3. There's the reason why he wants every house reached. He wants us to go searching in every house. Those who have not heard, let them hear. Those who have not known, let them know. Those who have not received, let them receive. Because Christ died for everyone. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. And all those men, they are in the houses. That's why you point, you pick them up. That's why you reach out to them. That's why in a systematic way, in a consistent way, in a thorough manner, you reach out to them who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all. To be testified in due time. Because Christ died for all. That's why he wants us to reach all. He wants us to seek the lost in every place. In Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. But his long suffering towards what? Not willing that any should perish. You see that? God is love. He doesn't want any to perish. They have sinned. Yes, but we all have sinned before. And yet his mercy reached us. His grace reached us. His love reached us. His favor reached us. And like he reached us, he wants to reach other people. And thank God, he's going to reach them. Through you and through me and through us together, he's going to reach them in Jesus' name. Because he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It's very clear, we've we'll seen that now. His plan. God's plan of salvation for every house. But how do we do that? How do we reach every house? Point number two now. Great passion was strategy for evangelizing homes. Great passion 
was strategy for evangelizing homes. Look up here for a moment. You know, there are people that have passion, passion, fire, their heart within, enthusiasm, excitement, but there's no strategy. There's no method. It's just all fire. And they don't know what they want to burn with the fire. And they don't have the strategy and the method to make sure that the fire accomplishes what it ought to accomplish. Passion. It must be with strategy. There are some other people, on the other hand, the wise. They develop plans, strategy, and they map out everything. They calculate. They look at population. They look at every local government. They put everything on paper. There's good strategy, but there's no passion. There's no passion. They are dull. They look warm. They're cold. They're lethargic. There's no passion. Strategy without passion. Passion without strategy will not take us anywhere when you bring the two together. That there is great passion. And there is strategy. We're going to evangelize every home in our communities in Jesus' name. Give me the amen of passionate people. Look at this great passion for strategy for evangelizing homes. We're looking at Joshua chapter 2. Joshua chapter 2. And here I'm reading from verse 12. Joshua chapter 2. Reading from verse 12. It says in verse 12, now therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. Here is Ahab the harlot. She said about the children of Israel, and she knew the Lord had given the lunch unto them. And she wanted to escape the judgment coming upon the whole land of Canaan. She wanted salvation. But look at this. She said, I have shown you kindness. You will show kindness to my father's house. My father's house. Look at verse 13. And that he will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sister, and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. You see that? It's talking about, uh, she mapped out everything. It didn't just, she didn't just say, my house, my father's house. He said, I'm talking about number one, my father. Number two, my mother. Number three, my brothers. Number four, my sisters. Number five, and all that they have. They have children, I want them to be saved. They have grandchildren, I want them to be saved. They have servants, I want them to be saved. They have whoever dependents they have, I want them to be saved. That's planning, that's strategy. And then you look at verse 17. In verse 17, and the men said unto her, We will be blameless of these nine oaths, which thou hast made us to swear. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which thou didst let us down by. You know what he was saying? We need a sign to recognize the house. We need something to hang there, different from all the other houses, so that we can tell that that is the house. And that's, a, that's a good plan. And then it says, and thou shalt bring thy father. You know what he was saying? We don't know your father. You know your father. Here's the strategy. We know you. We have contacted you. You now go and contact your father and your mother and your brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. 
they must not be scattered here and there. That's a strategy that will have touched your life. We came to one house, and as we come to that one house, somebody is born again. Somebody is rejoicing, and he says, Praise the Lord, I'm born again. I want to go with you people. I cannot live around here. I'm going to come and live with you. No, you cannot do that. Stay there. And through you, your father, your mother, your relatives, everyone there will be reached. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the streets, his blood shall be upon his head because we can't recognize them outside. It's when they are inside with you here, you put the sign on your house. You bring them into your house. We recognize the house, we recognize you. Everyone you bring in there, salvation comes to them. If anyone comes out, they comes, he lives in no man's land. And we don't know him. We don't recognize him. Whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be upon our head, if any hand be upon him. And so they arch a strategy. As we are reaching every house, and we are bringing the gospel of salvation unto them, we are going to go with strategy in Jesus' name. We reach everyone. We reach every house. I will do it in a systematic way so I will show we're not missing anyone that Jesus died for. Eventually, those children of Israel, they came to the land and Jericho was surrounded and Jericho was to be destroyed and salvation was to come to Rahab. Look at this in chapter 6 and verse 25. Joshua chapter 6 verse 25 and Joshua, and Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive. Look at this. And her father's household and all that she had and she dwelt in Israel even unto this day because she hid the messengers with Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. They had strategy it worked for them. We have strategy. It's going to work for us. I said it's going to work for us. Let's come to the New Testament now. We're looking at Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Reading from verse 18. In Mark chapter 5 verse 18. Let me just remind you. This is the story of a man. Who had been insane. A lunatic. Evil spirits, unclean spirits, directing, controlling, tormenting, torturing him. A legion. And then the Lord delivered him. When the Lord delivered him, he wanted to just stay with Christ. But Jesus said, no, there must be a strategy here. You have got saved. You have got delivered. You have got healed. There must be strategy to catch and to have all the others. Look at chapter 5 of Mark verse 18. And when he was come into the sheep, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him, pleaded with him, that he might be with him. How be it, Jesus suffered him not, but says unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and has had compassion on thee. You see the strategy of Jesus Christ has got one. And this one wanted to abandon the family, wanted to abandon the friends. I'll follow Jesus all alone by myself. I'm ready to go to heaven or anywhere you go. I'll go with you. And Jesus said, no, go home. Go home. You have a work to do. Go home. You have a ministry. Go home and tell them, your friends, tell them how great things the Lord has done for you. And he has had compassion on you. Look at verse 20. And he departed and he began to publish in the capolis how great things Jesus had done for him and all men did marvel. You see, even the man in hell, think about this, think about this one. Even the man in hell, let me read it to you. Luke chapter 16, 
Luke chapter 16, verse 27. He had the gospel too late. He knew about repentance too late. He knew about the possibility of getting to heaven too late. He was already in hell. And in Luke chapter 16, verse 27. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. He said, I'm here. I cannot cross over to that side. I cannot come out from here. Send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that ye may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. He had the desire to lead, the passion to lead, the excitement now, if you call that excitement where he was, but too late, he said, I cannot do it. I wish I could do it. I wish I had known this. I wish I could have done it. Let's have the strategy to reach everyone. Luke chapter 19. What did he mean from verse 5? Luke chapter 19. Reading here from verse 5. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste, come down. For today I must abide. Finish it for me. At thy house. Look up here for a moment. Why? Couldn't he forgive him there? Yes, he could. Couldn't he save him there? Yes, he could. But no, I must abide at thy house. You see, Zacchaeus had a family too. Zacchaeus had people too. He said, take me to your house. You are getting salvation. You are getting redemption. You are getting the gospel. I'll follow you to your house. You may not know how to tell the people in your house. I'm going to tell them. Then he says, and he made haste, and he came down, and he received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come where? I said where? To this house. For as much as he also is the son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. It's after that he now handed over to us the baton. The work that we should continue. And that's the way we should do it. Somebody is saved. Follow them to their houses. Let the other people there hear the strategy. A man is saved. Let him take you to the family. The wife and the children, they must be saved. A woman is saved. Let her take you to the family. The rest of the family must be saved. Because Jesus said in verse 13, And he called his ten servants, and delivered them ten pounds, and said unto them, Say it again, Say it again. Occupy till I come. We'll be occupied. I said you'll be occupied. We'll be doing the right thing and telling people and going from house to house and the households will receive the gospel in Jesus' name. Now, as we do that, how do we do that? Strategy, yes. The strategy is about mapping out all those places and making sure that we reach all the houses, all the homes without missing anyone. But as we get there, it's not only to enter there. We have to speak the word of God to them. We have to reveal to them the word of life. 
That brings us to point number three. Guided presentation of the Savior. We are presenting the Savior to them. Guided presentation of the Savior to entire households. Entire households. We are coming to Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. Reading from Vastachi. Proverbs 11. Vastachi. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. Wise men here today, are you there? Wise sisters, women here today, are you there? That wisdom is to win souls, to win souls. He that winneth souls is wise. The way you present the gospel. Look at how Jesus presented the gospel to that woman at the well. Wisdom. Look at how Jesus approached the centurion. Wisdom. Look at how Jesus approached uh, Nicodemus. Wisdom. If any man lack wisdom, if any woman lack wisdom, let him, let her ask of God. God will give unto you. I say God will give unto you. You'll have the soul winner's wisdom even from today more than ever before in Jesus' name. I was waiting for your amen. amen. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 26. Proverbs 21 verse 31 verse 26. She opens, she opens her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue the law of kindness. In our tongue, the law of kindness. What does that mean? You get to a home and you see that there is somebody who is deformed there. You understand? Anybody who is deformed will be, uh, will, uh, has forgotten about it. It's not, you know, thinking about it because it's been like that for some time. And it doesn't affect his life, doesn't affect her life. But if a stranger comes in, a new person comes in, and he's uh, looking at that all the time, looking only at that, you cause embarrassment. And that's not kindness. You look away from that. And if you get to that house, it, uh, it's like the house is broken. The husband is there, the wife is not there. You're not probing, you're not asking questions. What happened? Are you fighting? Are you wicked? Are you this? Are you that? No questions like that. You, you are kind unto them. Or you have a child, they have a child there that happens to be on drugs and is behaving one way or the other. Is this your own child? How do you become like this? What has he been doing? What's a drug he's been using? Not ask that kind of question. You open your mouth with wisdom because God has sent you there and through you, Christ will come there and solve all their problems in Jesus' name. I did hear your amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. What did he mean from verse 9? Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 9. And moreover, because the preacher was wise. You're preaching the gospel. You're going to tell the whole household about the word of the Lord. Because the preacher was wise. He still taught people knowledge. Don't go out there and just entertain them. Don't go there and just say things that, you know, fantastic things, but not true. But you give them knowledge. And the knowledge they have, the knowledge they need to have, is the knowledge of all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The knowledge they need to have, we cannot save ourselves. Because my tears forever flow. My zeal, no respite, no. All this for sin cannot atone. Thou and thou alone must say, but Jesus Christ died for everyone. That's the knowledge they need. And whosoever now shall call upon the name of the Lord, turn away from sin and turn to the Savior, shall be saved. That's the knowledge they have. You will teach knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and he sought out and searched in order many proverbs. That is, many illustrations. They may not understand if you're just quoting Bible, quoting Bible, like we do inside the church. But now you're going to them and you're setting forth parables, proverbs, illustrations. It says the preacher sought out 
acceptable words. Acceptable words. There are words that are not acceptable. You're talking to somebody who is, uh, you know, walking, uh, you know, with her body. And she's selling her body to get money. And you want to talk to such a person, uh, you, you're, not, you're not degrading them. You're not abusing them. You're not insulting them. You don't want them to come to shame. You want them to just realize by themselves that the Spirit of God will point it out to them. And there are some vocabularies you will not use. There are some words you will not use. You find out acceptable words. God will give you wisdom. I say God will give you wisdom. Verse 10, the preacher sought out to find out acceptable words that, that, and that which was reaching, was upright, even the words of truth. The words of the wise as goats and as nails fastened by the masters of the assemblies which are given from one shepherd. Moreover, he continues to tell us that the judgment day will come and as to speak the word of God to them, I pray you will escape the judgment of God in Jesus' name. Look at verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Love God. Honor God. Respect God. Love what he loves. Hate what he hates. He loves the souls. Love them too. He hates their sins. Hates the sins too. And keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. This is the whole duty of man. As we go out, it will give us wisdom. It will give us understanding. I will reach out to the people searching for them and bringing them in in the wisdom of the Spirit in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 12, verse 12. Luke chapter 12, verse 12. For the Holy Ghost, who is going to help you? I said, who is going to help you? For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in that same hour what ye ought to say. I pray the Lord will make you a winner of souls. And many, many will come into the kingdom of God through you in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 21, reading from verse 15. Luke chapter 21, verse 15. For I will give you a mouth and a wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gain say or resist. The Lord will do it for you. And the Lord will make us ambassadors for his name, ambassadors for his glory, And as we go from house to house, many will come to know the Lord through you, through me, through us, in Jesus' name. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're looking at verse 11. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord will persuade men. That's what you want to do. You're going out, house to house, household to household, and you're touching lives. You're talking to individuals. You're talking to families. You're talking to the young. You're talking to the old. You know the terror of God. You know the judgment of God. And because of that, you speak persuasively. So that they will turn away from sin. And they will turn to the Lord. It's not just to go out. Well fulfilled all righteousness. I went there. I told them. They didn't accept. I gave them tracts. They didn't accept. I revealed my mission to them. They didn't accept. I fulfilled all righteousness. No it's not for that. It's for, for saving souls. You'll persuade men. God will give you wisdom. Verse 18 of that same chapter, verse 18, and all things of God 
who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. He has given to you the ministry of reconciliation. He will prosper that ministry in your hand in Jesus' name. To which, that is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. The word that will bring them to the Lord, not the word that will drive them away. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Now then, I am, say that, I am an ambassador for Christ. Now then, I can't hear you. I am an ambassador for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's church, be ye reconciled unto God. As you go out, this ministry will prosper in your hand. This work will prosper in your hand. As you touch lives, searching for them, the Lord will lead you. Lead me to some soul today. Give me the word to say. Help me. Some friends are lost in sin. Today, I must reach out. Every day, you must reach out and you bring souls into the kingdom in Jesus' name. Look at your community, every house there to be reached. Look at the local government, every house there to be reached. Look at your region, every house there to be reached. Look at the state, every house there to be reached. Look at our nation, look at your nation, every house there to be reached. Organize all the believers. Motivate all the believers. Mobilize all the believers. Strategize for all the believers. Let's go out and reach them and bring them to the kingdom of God. Great will be your reward in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and take that to the Lord that by the grace of God, you are going to be fruitful. You will not be spiritually unfruitful. You are going to bear fruit and the work of the Lord will prosper in your hand, prosper in our hands. Look at every area. We, those of us who are leaders, a grow pastor, you are a pastor, you are an overseer in the region, in the state, in the nation. Develop strategy. Develop strategy. And let's reach house to house until everyone will hear.